Hi guys, Damon Fiore from Dark Raven Training. I recently published a video uh, regarding my M9 TAC Ops uh, medical loadout kit. Um, in discussing that kit, I showed a couple of different devices, uh, well, a multitude of devices that I keep in, uh, available for me when I go out and deploy. One of those is uh, an emergency blanket. I show where I keep four of them, uh, usually available in my med kit. They're very small, compact, cheap. I think I bought 20 of these blankets for about just under $10 on Amazon. Had them shipped here in a couple of days. So I've got my own inventory of these blankets. Uh, a lot of the things that I try to pack with, and I think it's the hallmark of most uh, combat medics, tactical medics, military medics, try to have devices that are multi-use. This is actually a multi-use device. I'm going to demonstrate how to apply it uh, when we're going to deal with a, uh, when we're trying to treat for hypothermia, or rather the, to prevent our casualty from losing body heat. And then I'm also going to show how it can be used for orthopedic injury as well. Now, uh, going through our March algorithm, M for massive hemorrhaging. So with this casualty, we've already addressed him with tourniquets. We're applicable. We have packed wounds. We stopped all major bleeding. I've addressed the airway in him already. So I've secured a patent airway by whatever means I would need to. Uh, R is for respiration. So I've cleared his chest. I've raked his torso. I've sealed all penetrating uh, open chest injuries with an occlusive dressing. I perform needle decompression where applicable. I've established uh, IV IO access. And now I'm going to treat for hypothermia. That's H, rounding out the March algorithm. To do this, this blanket, uh, this particular blanket is 52 by 84 inches, so 52 inches wide, 84 inches long. I suggest getting them as big as you can. It's only going to help you. This thing comes out. Right there, there we go. Uh, 52 inches wide and 84 inches long. Simply going to take one of the corners of the emergency blanket and tie a knot. Just one quick overhand knot. So now this knot is going to be positioned at the head. This basically is going to create a hood to go over the patient's head, the casualty's head, to prevent additional body heat loss. Um, as we know, we're losing a lot of heat out of our, uh, from our heads, like say, what, 70 to 80 percent of our body heat. So we want to take a consideration there to cover the head. And uh, we also, if, if we were in a cold environment, we would want to pack uh, under the shoulders, around the neck, and in the groin area, maybe some heating packs. And I actually have another video that I produced uh, that kind of addressed that as well. <clears throat> so once I find my knot, I'm going to come up and address the casualty. I'm going to roll him to the side. Take my knot, get over his head, and like such, I'll roll him back over. Come here, pull up some blankets, or some of the emergency blankets. Okay, now, what I would basically do, and this can be somewhat of a tight fit, uh, another tool that I like to keep with me is Gorilla Tape. I love this shit. You can uh, uh, take off eyebrows with it if you needed to. You can use it to secure gear. You can build chest. Uh, seals just using this stuff. This is very good tape. Um, if you haven't played with it, I suggest you get a roll. This is the best duct tape on the market. So, and I don't necessarily need to use Gorilla Tape. I can do this same thing with medical tape. So all I'm basically going to do is just attach this in a perpendicular fashion all the way down my casualty's body. There we go, if we get a good view of him, we've uh, protected most of his core. We've taken accommodations around the head. If I needed to, I could just buckle it up as such if I wanted to protect the face. Or, you know, you keep all the body heat in there. And if I had to do a reassessment, which every time we're moving a casualty that we've addressed with tourniquets or bandages or even chest seals, um, we, want to re we want to recheck those interventions and make sure that they're still tight 
make sure they're still in place. We don't have any re bleeding. Um, if I need to get in just to do a simple pulse check, respiration check, I can just cut the blank, the, the tape. And I can reach in here. I can address my casualty however I need to, double check everything. And then just seal them back up. John, how are you feeling there? Is it pretty warm? Yeah. You, you rat really warm? Okay. So, uh, obviously, if we were in a uh, real frigid environment, like right now, I know in the Midwest, in places, it's about zero degrees. This is probably not going to be enough. Um, so we would want to take other provisions with that. Uh, again, in, my old, in the video that I produced about a year ago, I was showing some uh, instant activated heating packs. If uh, that's a provision I can take, I can pack the groin area, I can pack underneath the armpits, and in the neck area to uh, try to keep the casualty warmer. This can be backed up with the blanket. We, we would have to, uh, depending on where we're at, uh, the environment, we, we should pack accordingly. However, in, in, even in Arizona, which is where I live, I live in the Phoenix area, it can, it's easily 115 degrees uh, out on the streets uh, during the daytime in the summer. Uh, even in the summertime, this is how I address trauma patients. Uh, again, I, I can't overemphasize, it's not necessarily an environmental thing, it's just with the trauma patient, because they're losing blood. As they lose blood, they're losing a capacity to, uh, they're losing body heat, and then they're losing their capacity to generate body heat. As that body heat starts to drop, uh, we start interfering with the body's ability to form blood clots. And that can be, uh, be very deadly for a patient. The second thing I'm going to show you guys is uh, how to use this blanket and a carabiner to create a uh, hasty pelvic binder. So we're talking about pelvic injuries, like whether they're open book fractures or some sort of pelvic trauma. As we know, the pelvis is very vascular. Uh, there's, there's many arteries, vessels, and whatnot. There's a lot occurring in the pelvis. If we've got an unstable pelvis, uh, we, we increase the risk of having an internal bleed that we can't necessarily treat. Um, and we can hold quite a bit of blood throughout our pelvis and even into our uh, uh, thighs in, in the upper legs. So with that being said, one way we can try to treat it, try to prevent it, is by stabilizing the pelvis if we suspect a fracture. Now some data that I read within the last year was uh, indicating that out of uh, all battlefield traumatic amputations, so these are dismounted IED attacks, uh, however, explosions and whatnot, that in 70% of the instances, somewhere close to 70, when there was a traumatic amputation of a lower extremity, there was also a corresponding pelvic fracture. So that's something to keep in mind. If you roll up on a dismounted IED attack and the guy's lost legs, we need to strongly consider the possibility that he has also fractured his pelvis. So, to build my pelvic binder, I'm just going to spread out my blanket as such. Sorry, I got the duct tape from the last demonstration kind of messing with me. I'll address my casualty. Now what I'm basically trying to do, I'm trying to capture his entire pelvis in the width of this blanket. I'll come across, <clears throat> roughly about halfway, and tie a knot. Now I'm going to tie a second knot. But before I complete this second knot, I'm going to grab my carabiner and get it in there. Now by putting this carabiner inside here, I've now created myself a windlass. You alright? 
Am I pinching your nuts? <laughs> you get close. You get really close. Well, yeah, like, ah, all right, all right, calm down. Is it just really tight around your hips? Yeah. Lots of good pressure? Yeah. yeah. All right, settle down. <laughs> now I can take this carabiner and I can come right back through uh, the, uh, the blanket if I wanted to. That would secure it. Or if he's got a belt on, I can capture somewhere on the belt. In this instance, I'm just going to crank it. Relax, I'm not going to get your nuts. Securing up there. I'm not going to torture him any bit more. Um, however, again, not an ideal pelvic binder, but on the fly, if I had to do something, this is holding a fair amount of pressure on your hips. Does it hurt? There's just a lot of pressure pulling your pelvis together, correct? All right. So there we go. I've shown uh, the versatility of this blanket. These are two applications that I use them in. Um, I I'd like to take credit for this. But I'm going to give credit where credit's due. This was actually a German uh, special ops medic that I was doing some training with that showed me the versatility of uh, this uh, emergency uh, heat blanket or emergency blanket in addressing hypothermia, but also maintaining a pelvic fracture. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.